Possibly the most shocking number one trending book of the year, wouldn't you say? I've never thought about this book in a number one context ever. I had never heard of this guy until this week, so let's get into it, I guess. Trending comic books of the week at the table with my homies. An Overstreet Price Guide advisor. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button, and... Hit him with number 10. Number 10 on the list, Batman, Superman, World's Finest, number 10. We're talking about the Christmas variant. And who else did we get on the cover but Paul McCartney singing a karaoke version of his own song with Superman. So in this book, this just came out this week, we are seeing $25 average sales. And we're also seeing a lot of comparisons to the recent Eminem uh, Amazing Spider-Man variant that recently just came out from Marvel. That's right. Marvel gets Eminem on the variant. They do like a 5,000 print run book. It goes bananas. I don't even want to quote what 9.8s are going for because we don't have any sales validated yet. However, this book on the list was actually open to order and was in the solicitation for months. So this was actually planned likely prior to Eminem getting his own variant. I also want to point out, aside from it being really a cool holiday issue featuring someone from the Beatles, fantastic, we also have one of the best comic book runs to come out in 2022. World's Finest was such an amazing read, like OG storytelling, some of the best art in comics at DC all year. That's true. We broke down like the first story arc, I think, on the channel when this first came out. It's a really good run. Uh, yeah, you don't get a lot of covers with the Beatles on them either, so I can't see why the demand for this is pretty high. But again, I don't think the comparison to the Eminem variant is warranted. Now, guys, here's an LCS reality check. These books were solicited in October along with nine other holiday books. This had nothing to do with DC versus Eminem versus Marvel or whatever. Keep in mind that it was also open to order from Lunar, so a lot of shops could have bought a ton of them. There's probably a ten to 15,000 print run, and that's a concern conservative estimate. People who are paying $40 or more probably need to chill out a little bit. We know that during the holidays, we always see a bump in Christmas book prices. It's probably best to wait until January when this cools off a little bit. If you want to support this show directly and enhance your comic book collecting simultaneously, utilize code TOM101 on the best comic collecting app in existence. It's called Key Collector Comics. You get access to a wealth of funny book information, the trending 20, the larger list we source these 10 comic books from prior to when we even hit the mic, you can learn about them. And at the list at number nine, we got God of War announcements this week. Number nine in the list, God of War, number one from 2010. We are seeing $80 average sales and a recent high sale of $350 for CGC 9.8. It looks like there's a 333% increase in copies sold compared to last week, which makes sense because God of War has been officially ordered to series at Amazon. This is a tough book to get in any grade. Under 10,000 of them were printed. This is one of the most respected video game franchises of all time. It has a lengthy history, and in 2018, there was kind of a reboot, and that is where the focus of this narrative is going to be when it goes to the screen. So the thing I love most about this issue of God of War number one, I, I was not aware of this comic book, but the, it's the first interior artwork by Andrea Sorrentino. We've actually been talking about first uh, works of artists on these lists recently, and uh, Andrea Sorrentino is a really cool artist who you might know from Gideon Falls more recently. Uh, this would have been like two years before he took on Green Arrow in the New 52 with Jeff Lemire. That was really sort of his claim to fame. So it's cool to get an interesting first look at God of War, number one. Now, 2010 is the era that they were releasing video game comics, but the print runs were very low. So when we see 171 copies on the census and actually one copy at a 9.9, .9, people are all waiting to see where the market is. It has increased drastically in the last week alone. We were seeing them selling at $320 for a CGC 9.8 with a peak at 350. This is still nowhere near the all-time high from back in May 2021 of $450 for a CGC 9.8. Keep in mind that there is a second print of this book that is super low print run, and if that hits the market, it's going to command a premium. The focus on the 2018 has me hyped, but I'm also feeling quite humbled this week because we're working with the then and now lead artist of the game. We have by you, Ryan, the Berserker number one variant going in the January mystery mail call one per box cover art done by art director Rath freaking Grissetti. ComicTom101.com to join the community or hit the link in the description and at the list at number eight, taking it back to 1975 with Ben Riley's first appearance in ASM number 149. 
This is a classic book and it is currently selling for $180 average sales and we have a high 9.4 sale for $525 just about a week and a half ago. This book is the first appearance of Peter Parker's clone, Ben Riley, who later becomes Scarlet Spider. This is a retcon and I still believe this book is egregiously undervalued considering how old it is and the fact that this is truly Ben Riley's first appearance. We've got a 100% increase in copies sold of this book compared to last week and uh, also, like last week, we are talking about a bunch of characters that made appearances in the Across the Spider-Verse trailer, Ben Riley being one of them, who we did not get to last week. But also, like last week, I'm wondering which of these spider characters are actually going to play a role in the movie or, like, be more than just a little Easter egg. I got a good feeling about this one, though. Yeah, he is very prominent on the poster, which has spiked multiple books on the list this week. And... You're right. This is a very undervalued book because the retcon that wouldn't take place till 1994 when Ben Riley would become Scarlet Spider, it was such a big event. The character design lined up with the Spidey fans that to this day, it's such a respected character in the Spider-Verse, but also the Clone Saga, that whole narrative is one of the most disliked stories in Spider comics. Yeah, and it's almost like 30 years later and we're, we got the Dark Web event, which is kind of playing into that whole concept of clones and, and you know people impersonating each other. And What a great time to be a Ben Riley fan, right? Everything just works on a cycle, I guess. But yeah, you got plenty of Ben Riley right now if he's your dude. Now, the most recent sale was the CGC 9.4, but we did see a 9.8 hit $5,280 in April of this year, and we had copies of 9.6 sell for 978 in August of this year and $1,300 all the way back in May. And now we're rounding out the year with another bad idea trending comic book. We have Werewolf and the Society of Fearless Frontiersmen number one. This is a one shot that includes an additional comic book story on the inside, a very thick book, lots of value, seeing a very aggressive average sale price, even if it is above 60 pages long. So this book is selling for $20 average sales, and we have high online sales of $40. But if you are lucky enough to find one of the 200 local comic shops across the country that sell Bad Idea, you can get it for cover price still. So here's where it gets confusing. This book is a fresh story. There are two different stories. You've got Werewolf and the Society of Fearless Frontiersmen. Werewolf was printed last year through Bad Idea. You could only obtain a copy of Werewolf by sending in a bad idea pin and $10 to get one of two different books back. One of those was Werewolf. So it wasn't as easy to read Werewolf before, but now it is. This is like the mass distribution opportunity. And they coupled it with a brand new comic book narrative, which is why it's so thick, and a new cover as well to preserve the collectible. Correct. The new cover, the book this week, will say Werewolf. X the Society of Fearless Frontiersmen, and then at the bottom it'll say Double Shot by Bad Idea. So you can tell it looks the cover looks pretty similar. They have the same cover art. Trade dress is just a little different. Now, as if it wasn't already difficult enough to get Bad Idea books, they're issuing these little gold buttons, like a Willy Wonka golden ticket, and you have Sophie's Choice. You get to decide whether you're going to keep the button and maybe get a new comic book in the future, or you could send it off and decide to get which comic you have. There are buttons out there that do say Werewolf X, the Society of Fearless Frontiersmen on them, and those are going on eBay themselves for like 45, 50 bucks right now. So people are really clamoring for the chance. If you like bad idea books, they're not easy to get. Even at every con I went to, if there was a bad idea booth, they had things where you went over and took a selfie with Matt Kent and tagged him on Instagram and they'd give you a comic book. Or you said some special magic phrase and you got another comic book. They are making it hard, but they're also making it fun. And what's this at number six? We have The Origin of Deathstroke, the first appearance of Nightwing. We have Tales of the Teen Titans, issue number 44, George Perez Goodness. This right here is spiking for a couple reasons. Yeah, Yes, we have the Titans show. However, we also have a universe being changed again at DC Comics. So this perpetually relevant book shows Dick Grayson, formerly Robin, becoming Nightwing. We are seeing average sales of $120 for a raw copy and $400 for a CGC 9.8. It's a 133% increase in copies sold because this week we saw Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths issue number seven. This miniseries has finally wrapped up with some crazy stuff going on. It's a lot to get into here. But if you haven't been reading Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths, as it was renamed, basically you have the Justice League dying earlier this year, and now all of the next-gen heroes, such as Nightwing, such as Yara Floor, such as Jonathan Kent, Superman, uh, the Teen Titans, a whole bunch of other people, they all kind of have to step up and solve this new 
multiversal end of the entire universe sort of, you know, big event comics calamity. It all boils down basically to a fist fight between Nightwing and Deathstroke. And now we're going to have a whole new DC universe rebuilding from the ashes of this event. Forging the future one hero at a time is what they're telling us. And clearly with the focus on Nightwing that has interest on this comic book that is indeed perpetually relevant. I want to know your thoughts in the comment section below, whether it's what took place in this event ending conclusion or what's going on in Tom Taylor's run, which is clearly one of the best superhero comics of the year. If you're a fan of DC Comics like myself, you know that every five years or so, they love to just hit the reset <laughs> button on everything. We are in that phase right now. Uh, you can see on this image on the screen, we've got the teaser for Dawn of DC, which is kind of their layout of 2023. We're coming up on Lazarus Planet very soon, which the is going to- The first thing they pick is like, okay, this is where we can resurrect people. Yep. So like, we, we start with a clean slate. Pretty much. That's what's going to happen. And we've got a list of some titles that look interesting that are going to be coming out soon. There's two different Green Lantern books, uh, which is where I, I my eye is drawn first. I I saw that. I'm like, Ryan's just well, like, I mean, you get one, all giddy over One's here. written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, who's doing action comics right now, one of my favorite writers. Another one is Mariko Tamaki. She wrote Detective Comics recently, which I also really love. There's going to be a new Superboy comic now. We've got Batman Brave and the Bold. There's a Doom Patrol comic coming out. There's a Penguin out. comic. There's a Penguin comic book written by Tom King coming out soon, too. So I'm, I'm excited, but I love DC, so we'll see what happens. Number five on the list, Spider-Woman number one from 1978. This is the debut of the new costume and the origin of Spider-Woman Jessica Drew. We are seeing $75 average sales and $280 for a CGC 9.8. Eight. Again, this has more to do with the new movie trailer. We do see a spider woman in there, and she kind of looks like an amalgam of multiple spider women, not necessarily Jessica Drew herself. But in the poster, we get the OG spider woman as well. So that. it's like, where's the narrative going to focus? Because some of these may just be Easter eggs. And clearly, this version of spider woman looks like she's got a lot of screen time. Yeah, there's this cool shot of her from the trailer, and uh, I forgot until I saw this image in the trailer that Spider-Woman shoots webs out of her fingertips right. and not out of her you know, wrist or out of the top of her hand like Venom does or whatever. Fingertips. Seems like that'd be kind of weird to like swing from a building that way. I don't know how that works, but Spider-Woman could be cool. I'm excited to see her in action. And yeah, this does look like a combination of different Spider-Women. The outfit for this character seems to be inspired by the 2015 run from Dennis Hopeless when she was actually pregnant. It looks like she is pregnant in the photo, too, is, is the vibe I got. Uh, and she rides a motorcycle while pregnant, which doesn't seem very safe to me. Uh, but I don't ride motorcycles and I've never been pregnant. So what do I know? Now, seldomly do we pat ourselves on the back about comic books. And we're going to do it right here, right now. Because members who listened to us in 2020, 2021, when we reported on the cases that were found of this book, that were all being sold together, that would eventually hit the CGC. And they did, by the way. This book at 9.8 has plummeted. More than I think even the market conditions effect on the industry has. So a book of this caliber, fantastic book, but there's almost 8,000 copies graded. 1,500 copies are at a 9.8, 2,200 copies at a 9.6, 1,300 copies at a 9.4. All of these high-grade copies came from a warehouse find in the New York area about a year and a half, two years ago, and these have since hit the market. That's why the record high in October of 2021 was over a thousand dollars for a CGC 9.8 and we're now seeing sub three hundred dollar prices there are just too many out there we're keeping track of the historical record comic fam hit the like and slap the subscribe button for that and now at the list at number four vault of spiders number one this was a offshoot of the spider denon event back in 2018 seeing 15 dollar average sales and 79 dollars for a cgc 9.8 an increase of 550 percent because of spider appearances from that spider totem in the multiverse we have 41 copies graded at a 9.8 and a total of 55 on the census so yeah like tom said this is a, an anthology series that ties into spider geddon from 2018 Two issue series. This first issue has four different uh, short stories in here about different spider characters. You got Web Slinger. That's like an Old West Spider-Man character. There's it's like Gunslinger meets Spider-Man. Sure. I whatever. Let's do it. You've also got Spider-Bite, which is a spider that kind of just lives in the internet. Hits the computer really hard. Like, and he's like, like, like a hacker. working really, really quickly. This book also has the first appearance of the Savage Spider-Man, who is a Peter Parker who was raised on the Savage Land by actual spiders. It was actually a recent Savage Spider-Man 5-issue miniseries that just finished. Totally different thing, I think, though. 
Also, I think my favorite part about Vault of Spiders is the Leopardon. Right, the Supider Man. Leopardon makes an appearance in like a lost manga style story on the inside of this book. It's the first appearances, however, of the other spider characters that are causing the uptick in copies sold this week because they are featured kind of in the background on this poster with a lot of other Spider Verse characters. That's true. Uh, I took a good look at this poster. I found two of them. I was unable to find the Savage Spider Man on this poster, but if you look at the left hand side of the poster, you can see the Web Slinger. It's the one wearing the cowboy hat. And Spider Bite is standing just here behind uh, Ghost Spider on the right hand side of Miles' head. There are fewer than 50 copies on the CGC census. And with all of these books that have a ton of spider people in them, they're pretty much all good long-term bets as long as we're hanging out in the Spider-Verse. We have a recent book, a key appearance of multiple Spider-Verse characters, low risk, which is why we're seeing such an interest in the book. But also, I think it's probably going to be pretty low reward at this point for a lot of these books. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I see a lot of these characters actually featuring heavily in the movie. So let's move on to number three. Indeed, because Henry Cavill has been pretty busy this year. Henry Cavill has been busy lately, but you know what? He just left Witcher and he's not going to be Superman anymore, which means he has a lot of time to do things that he likes. Building computers, playing with his Warhammer miniatures. Warhammer miniatures. Let's go star in a television series about Warhammer. It's just amazing. He is very vocal about the fact that he plays with the miniature games and he likes to paint the little models. The game Warhammer has been around since 1987. And we have on the list right now, Warhammer Monthly number zero. This is the first time it was issued as a preview in 1998. It's a magazine size. We're seeing $25 average sales and a CGC 8.5 sale for $154. We are also seeing a high grade raw sale of $121, but a lot of these are had in the, again, $15 to $25 range because it is really condition sensitive and not a lot of people took care of them. I played Magic growing up and I just couldn't afford to do both. So I had some friends who were just like dedicated to Warhammer, Warhammer 40k, and then I had my other friends who played Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, and then there was me on the playground playing Magic, tapping my mana, casting <laughs> spells, damn it. Meanwhile, I was just playing video games by myself in my bedroom. The thing to keep in mind is since this deal was just announced this last week, things move real slow in Hollywood, so we're not going to actually see a Warhammer series for years, if we ever see it at all. Things get optioned, picked up all the time, and never actually come out. So uh, it'll be a while before we see any Warhammer 40K on screen starring Henry Cavill. We just got to keep an eye out for whatever he's doing in the meantime. Hopefully he's doing something besides sitting around and painting, but... He's got 3,000 points of Eldar to paint. I mean, he's going to be fine. Keep an eye out for issue number one of the Warhammer comic series, which also made the trending 20. There's only six slabs of that book on the census. We keep reminding the community to watch the not just video game franchises, but popular IPs, including Warhammer. I'm waiting for StarCraft to make the list. At the list at number two, we have Web of Spider-Man 118. We warned him about Ben Riley swinging on this list. Again, we have now the Scarlet Spider to talk about. Web of Spider-Man 118 from 1994, seeing $100 average sales, and this blew my mind, a CGC 9.8 going for $700, and this is low. Web of Spider-Man is one of those runs that is really neglected. There's not a lot of keys in the Web of Spider-Man run, so people will just kind of gloss over the fact that you have a book that's so late in the run that is a major key that people are paying so much money for. It's kind of incredible. What I find incredible is the love for this character. There is typically spec that makes this perpetually relevant throughout the years. And the heights for so many books we've been talking about for months were all reached during the comic boom, but not this one. Members have been hunting for this book on and off for years. And that's why the height was reached in May of this year for nearly $1,200. So yeah, the book is down, but really, it's always trending. It's interesting to think about, too, especially with Ben Riley's journey he's been on in comics in the last year specifically. That kind of makes sense. This was set in May, back earlier in the Beyond storyline when uh, you had Ben Riley and Peter Parker both operating as Spider-Man at the same time, which is kind of a lead into this whole chasm dark web stuff we're experiencing now. It kind of makes sense that we would see some of these records set in 2022. Yeah, just keep an eye out for that newsstand because that's really what's commanding the big prices. $2,000 is what the heights were reached back in September of this year, but the last sale in December was snagged for under 1500, sold for 1450. Hit the like. Slap the subscribe button. How do you feel 
about Scarlet Spider making it so high on the list with this next issue rounded it out at number one. We didn't see it coming, and I bet you didn't either. So while researching for this list, I found a list of 10 supervillains you will never see on screen. Uh, and featured on that list was uh, Polka Dot Man. Made it on the screen. And uh, The Matador. Also made it on the screen. Also Hypno Hustler. Oh, what's this? Number one on the list, another Spider-Man run that nobody's really specking on. Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man, number 24. The first appearance of Hypno Hustler. $70 average sales and a high CGC 9.8 for $500. All right, here it is. Comic fam, your Sinister Six is as followed. We have Craven. We have Morbius. We have Venom. We have Vulture. We have El Muerto, and now Donald Glover as Hypno Hustler. Leave it to Sony to make the poor man Sinister Six. <laughs> like, this is the budget Sinister Six, guys. We're just kidding. It's not confirmed, but, you know, I'll play. Might as well be at this point. I don't know what they're thinking over there, man. Well, they're doing these, like, offshoot Spider-Verse movies that don't have Spider-Man in them. Yeah, that makes no sense. And Donald Glover was already in Spider-Man Homecoming. He was supposed to be the Prowler. Like, what's... Th hope this... They're choosing this over the Prowler right now? Mm -mm. So this being the Hypno Hustler, it could be set in the 1970s, be an entirely different character, and still be played by Donald Glover. People are excited because that's a great name. 2,150% increase in copies sold on the casting news. And we also know that Miles Murphy, Eddie Murphy's son, is attached to write. This is great news. There aren't that many of this book on the census. Only 58 slabs total, and 28 of those are CGC 9.8. Comic fam, are you partying all the time or not? Let me know in the comments section below and as always keep responsibly enough said join us on the best new place to buy and sell collectibles it's called whatnot we do dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long we break out key comics exclusive comics incentive variants and we sell them and beat ebay every single week this is the best new place to grab your funny books and you can support us directly links in the description we have two other videos for you to check out we made them for the comic community and we appreciate you have a great week